Well, howdy again, everyone. This is Cliff Hannes coming to you from Central Texas. And I wanted to go through the step-by-step -step process that I use to convert bare soil to grazing pastures. And it's a very straightforward process. It's gonna start with, in some instances, clearing um, selected pieces of property and or um, modifying existing um, wooded areas so that I can leave some woods which you can see in the background behind the track hoe here. Um, I left that strip of woods there so the cattle have a place to get in out of the heat during the summer and get shade and can use it as a windbreak during the winter when these northers come through. So Jay, the guy that does our clearing for us and our um, any dirt work here at the at the ranch and at the clinic, um, you can see him moving some yoke pond that he's cleared out, ingeniously using it to drag out the fire that started in the grass here. And this guy is really awesome to watch. He's he just knows that piece of equipment like the back of his hand and we'll burn that brush that yopon even when it's green really makes a hot fire and he'll uh, burn that we'll go through that process and get the wood out of the equation and then as that fire burns down um, we'll be left with some big stumps that we have to eventually bury because those bigger trees with all the clay around the root ball, um, it gets to a point where you can't burn it anymore. So we burn all the brush that uh, we took out. And as that fire burns down, you can see um, we rapidly dissipate the carbon and get rid of that so we can then smooth out the property and, and get grass uh, coming our way. So this little band of trees that's standing there is um, some good oak. We try to leave all the big trees that we can and recognize that some of those will die out just from the minor damage that can occur to their bark during the clearing process. Very rare that we lose very many trees but we'll probably lose one or two in that little patch over the course of the next several years and then we'll come in and take care of that. So as those, um, as that fire burns down and we're left with those stumps, um, he'll come through with the track hoe and stir this pile one more time to try to get good wood contact with the coals and burn again, burn everything that we can and then we will, um, bury the stumps at that point, smooth out the land and make it uh, ready for the planting process. So clearing the brush, starting a fire, getting the fire to burn down and then getting to this point starts the next part of the project. So after the pile is burned and any stumps that won't burn buried. This is what the completed burned area looks like. So they put the topsoil back over the top of it that they scraped away. You can see there's a little bit of clay down there and that will all uh, grow really good grass. This is the sandy loam soil here and the next step now is I will come in with the cedar and I will put out some Cheyenne Bermuda grass seed and probably some rye grass seed with it and then I'll feed the cattle uh, some unrolled hay on top of this area and then it will explode this spring. So that's where we are and I'll show you the next step. Once the cleared area is smooth and made ready to plant, then um, I'll 
add seed to my seeder and I'll seed that area. In this instance I'm putting out Cheyenne Bermuda grass which obviously won't start to grow till later this spring. And then I went over this as well with some ryegrass seed to get some late winter uh, forage production. And so I went through over this area with my Kubota and my attached cedar. Um, this little spot that I'm showing you here was pretty uh, narrow, so I had to kind of manipulate my Kubota around just because it's got a 17 foot turning radius and doesn't turn on a dime. But I spread that seed as evenly as I could. And then I'm in a position then to go to the next step, which is to um, lay some hay down and allow the cattle to graze. So I'm going to try to stay out of the wind. I got a pretty good wind today. This is that bare spot that we uh, seeded with the Cheyenne Bermuda grass and then I overseeded that with some rye grass. And I'm fixing to put the cattle in here but I wanted to show you the hay unrolled and the difference in quality. This is some hay that's both Johnson grass and a little bit of Bermuda grass. And we had trouble getting this hay put up. You can see a lot of Johnson grass right down there. We had trouble getting this hay put up because it was so wet last spring and we just never could get it down without a bunch of rain. And then when we did, it rained and you know the drill. But I've come in here and just unrolled this hay and you're gonna say, well, they're, they're gonna step on a lot of this and that is true. And I'm okay with that. I don't mind wasting some hay to get some organic matter on the soil here and get some fertility back in this soil. And this core here that you see, that thing is wrapped so tight or rolled so tight that you just can't get it un to unroll. It just stops about there. So I'll let them have at that. But you can see this coastal Bermuda grass, it unrolls beautifully. And this is hay that a uh, client puts up and he puts I think he's got a 1500 acre hay field and so he does an awesome job at a reasonable price so I'll keep you updated but this is kind of where we're at uh, and I'll have sequential videos showing this here's an interim update on this little area right here that you saw in the previous uh, creating pasture from woodland video and this was where we had a burn pile and they uh, burned everything that would burn and then there was some dense roots with with clay on them that wouldn't burn so we uh, buried them with the track hoe here and remember I seeded this area with some rye grass and some Cheyenne Bermuda grass. Obviously this is not going to be the Bermuda grass coming up yet. And then I put hay over the top of it and those cattle ate the hay. The hay is certainly decomposing, doing what it's supposed to do. The rye grass is starting to come up and this is what you would expect. You can see the hay was a little denser here, and again, that's going to decompose. There's going to be grass come up through there. Um, Bermuda grass will, will start to show. You can see the um, manure distribution here, and just exactly what I would expect. And we're probably maybe not quite a month or thereabouts from when I put the seed out. The seed germ germinated quite some time ago and it's kind of sitting here doing nothing just because it got cold and it's not growing good. No sun. But it's again we fertilized this bare spot. We put some seed down to get some cover. We want the root exudates and all the things that happen below the ground with soil microorganisms to start to bring this back to life and so that will happen and you'll be amazed at what this looks like here in about 60 days here's that spot 
right about three months after it was seeded and hay put on it and grazed by the cattle. You can see this is the areas that were mostly clay and they still have some hay that's decomposing which is good. We've had some rain and so there's been enough runoff to move the hay out of this spot here. But we're getting a pretty good cover of rye grass. The Cheyenne Bermuda grass is not coming up yet. It's too cool for that. That'll start coming up probably late April and into May. But you can see we got a pretty good cover. Um, I kept the cows in here longer than I typically would have and only because I was weaning some calves and I was trying to wean them in the pasture right next to the pens. So that's why that occurred. But we're making good progress. We've got, we've got good um, ryegrass coming up. In another week, 10 days, we're finally starting to get some warm weather. This will really, really blossom. You can see an area here, this strip right down the middle where um, we don't have much decomposing hay. I got some old bales that I'll probably come and just shake some of that hay off on this place to let that have a start. But the beautiful part about this is we've got organic matter down with the hay that was trampled in and not eaten by the cattle. We've got that hay decomposing and feeding the microorganisms in the soil and then we have plants growing that are letting uh, or building root exudates that are leaching into the soil to feed the microorganisms and the fungi and we're going to get a symbiosis there where one system feeds another so it's a beautiful thing you can heal the land. Hay is a great way to do it. I strongly recommend it. And I just wanted to show you this as we start into heavy duty spring here and the, and the lush growth that's going to happen here in the next couple of weeks. So this is coming along nicely. And I want to again thank you for watching and riding along with me.